Hi there. Today's Christmas reflection is on the thought of Christ giving us the gift of wisdom. Now, wisdom isn't necessarily the first thing one thinks of as God's gift to us at Christmas. In fact, in terms of the Christmas story as a human, we think, well, how wise was it for Jesus to come to earth as a vulnerable baby into a poor working class family with no visible means to support him should they come into real problems? At a time when the country was ruled by a foreign power, uh, the Romans, uh, who had no love for or knowledge of God, and with a puppet head of state who was a complete tyrant in Herod. This is not at all safe. This is not at all secure. And it's certainly not we, what we would have planned if we were doing it as human beings. But this was God's perfect plan, carried out at just the right time, the Bible says. This was God's wisdom. Paul was to later write to the church at Corinth. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. What Paul's saying is that God sees things differently to us. God's ways are not our ways. Paul goes on to write about about Christ being the wisdom of God and the power of God in that same chapter one of 1 Corinthians. And in another letter to the church of Colossae, he says that Christ, in Christ rather, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You see, Jesus Christ is God's gift of wisdom to humanity. Therefore, we need to listen to what he has to say to us and follow what he tells us to do. Wisdom is defined in the dictionary as the ability to make good judgments based on what you know or have experienced or have learned. In Luke's gospel, the last verse of his nativity story is Luke 2 verse 40 and in it he says and the child Jesus grew and became strong he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him even from a young age Jesus was filled with wisdom but in Luke's gospel we read in the nativity of a number of the main characters who had no idea what was going on at all they're asking the question how can this happen how will this happen to me They'd heard the, pl- the message clearly enough from angels uh, of God's plan for them, but they had no understanding of how it could all come to pass. And most people, of course, when Jesus was born, had no idea what was happening, had no idea of the significance of Jesus' birth. Some of them who did have some understanding, like Herod, reacted very negatively to it and wanted to do away with the child. Now today, most people around us have some knowledge of the nativity story. They know about Joseph and Mary and angels and shepherds and wise men and a star, but they remain totally in the dark about what the Christmas message means for themselves or mankind. They're not wise to the meaning of Christmas. I was brought up to go to church, our village church in North Yorkshire, where my dad played the church organ, my mum sang in the choir. We sang the carols every Christmas around the piano as a family. I knew the story of Christmas from a very early age. I played shepherds and kings in the nativity. Never got the chance of playing Joseph or the innkeeper, which I was a bit disappointed about, but there you go. But until in my teenage years, I met Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour, I never fully understood what this Christmas story meant to me and what it meant for the world. Now, lots of people are wise in their own eyes, as Proverbs reminds us. They've got their own theories about God, their own theories about who Jesus is, and about even what it might mean to be a follower of God and what's required of us these days. And they've made up these rules based on their own understanding of what is good and relevant and right and appropriate in our society. But when it comes to human wisdom, And God's plan of salvation, Paul describes our best attempts of understanding in our own minds as being foolish. That we'll never truly unlock the mystery of what Christmas is all about if it's left to our own, if we're left to our own devices. Now, Jesus Christ is described 
in Isaiah's great prophecy about the Messiah who would come, the king who would come as the wonderful counsellor. You see, it all depends on Jesus. He is our wisdom. The Christian faith centres on him, is founded upon him, is built upon him. He is the focus of our worship. He makes sense of our faith. And for those of us who believe the Christian message, Jesus is God's gift to enable us to comprehend and understand something of the nature and wonder and glory and magnificence of God's great plan of salvation. He brings God's presence to us. He brings God's purpose and plan to life. He's the light bulb moment for mankind. And it's a light that's still shining. A popular Christmas poster that churches often use says, wise men still seek him, that is still seek Jesus. And I would have to say to you as I close, it's a wise person who will carefully consider the true meaning of Christmas, who'll go beyond carols and go beyond nativity stories, who will themselves seek out the truth of who Jesus Christ really is. Because I believe in him, we find our purpose, our meaning and our hope. God bless you this Christmas, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of a saviour, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he is the light who brings and reveals God's plan of salvation to us, who helps us to understand who God truly is and how God wants to interact with us. Help us, each one, to receive him as our Lord, as our King, as our Messiah this Christmas. Help us to look carefully for him. And we know that you have promised that those who seek you like those wise men, will find you. I pray for everyone who maybe is starting that journey at this Christmas time, that as they truly seek you, Lord, you will find them and they will find you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless. Bye.